everyone, it's Mrs. Behrens. Today we are going to be learning about generalists and specialists for our ecosystem science lesson. The materials you will need are your green science notebook and a pencil. The article that we are going to read together is also attached in Schoology, so if you'd prefer to look at it independently or look at it after you watch this video, you can do that to help. Open up to the next blank page of your green science notebook and put the date and the title of the entry at the top. Today is October 19th, 2020. And the title is Generalists and Specialists. As we read the article together, we are going to use this entry to list information and examples of both generalists and specialists. In order to organize our information, we are going to make a t-chart. There we go. I'd like you to draw a line across the top of your paper like this and then a big line vertically all the way down to the bottom. We're gonna put generalists on the left and specialists on the right. As we read our article, we might come across information or examples of both generalists and specialists. And we will take a minute to list those in our notebook and record the information and examples. Generalists and specialists. There are more deer in North America than there were 50 years ago. Deer are leaving the forests because they don't have enough food. Deer thrive in places where the forests have been replaced with houses and towns. That's because they can find more to eat at the edge of the forest than in the interior. Other animals do far less well in their environments. For example, some animals, such as dinosaurs, have died out or become extinct. Others are on the brink of extinction. Some of them are labeled endangered species. The government protects them. Mammals on the endangered species list include the snow leopard and the red wolf. Many species of fish, oops, insects, fish, and birds may also be endangered. Why do some animals do well in our changing world while others do not? A part of the answer has to do with the lifestyles and the needs of different animals. Most animals fall into one of two groups, generalists or specialists. Some animals are not choosy about what they eat. They're not too picky about where they live either. These animals are known as generalists. Okay, that sounds like important information for us to write down. So I'd like you to take a moment, go back to your science notebook, and write down what we just read about generalists. I'm going to write, not picky about what they eat or where they live. Let's continue reading. They are adaptable. Hmm, that's an interesting word. I'm going to write that word down in my science notebook as well.
I'd like you to follow along and write down something similar to what I'm including. And if you need to pause the video, you can do that to take some time. The Virginia possum is a generalist. This species is found throughout the United States. It is also found in Mexico. It will eat just about anything, from fruits and vegetables to dead animals. It can survive in the freezing cold of East Coast winters, as well as in the tropical jungles of Mexico. That's an example of a generalist. So I'm gonna write that in my notebook as well. The Virginia, hmm, did it have two P's or one P? Let's look. One P. The Virginia possum. Let's move on to specialists. Other animals have specific diet and climate requirements. Take the red tree vole at left. It lives only in the evergreen forests of coastal California and Oregon in the northwest part of the United States. It cannot tolerate a warmer climate. This tiny creature is fussy about its diet too. It feeds on pine needles high in the evergreens. The red tree vole is a specialist. I'm going to write that down in my notebook because that's an example. Red tree vole. The article said that the red tree vole only lives in a certain place. So I'm going to write that down in my notebook too. Only lives in a certain type of place, or a word for that would be habitat. The article also said that it's picky about diet or what it's eating. I noticed that these details about specialists are very different from what we've learned about generalists. Let's continue reading. Oops, there we go. Other specialists and generalists. Look at the photograph of the house sparrow on this page and the other animals on the next page. Then read the descriptions. Can you figure out which of these animals are specialists and which are generalists? I am going to read the descriptions of these animals to you, but it will be your job to decide if they are generalists or specialists and to record these animals in the T-chart in your science notebook. First, let's look at the house sparrow. This small, 13 centimeters or five inches, Brownish bird is very comfortable in cities as well as rural areas throughout most of the world. It eats seeds as well as many different kinds of small insects. Pause this video and record house sparrow as either a generalist or a specialist, whichever one you think it is in your science notebook. Let's move on to the next example. The spotted owl. This dark brown owl nests in the hollows of trees in humid forests. Pause the video and write spotted owl in either generalists or specialists. Let's continue. Raccoon. This furry masked mammal eats almost anything, including fruit, insects, frogs, and birds. 
Its heavy coat protects it from the cold. Pause the video and write raccoon in either the generalist or specialist column. And finally, the black-footed ferret. This weasel-like mammal, which weighs 1.5 kilograms, about three pounds, lives in the burrows of prairie dog towns. It does not eat plants. It eats young prairie dogs. Write black-footed ferret under either generalists or specialists. Which one do you think it is? Once you have listed those four example animals, either under generalists or specialists, take a picture of your science notebook page and submit it to the assignment in Schoology.